So first disclaimer, the views expressed herein are those of the speaker. They do not reflect the views of the employer. And I have a cat, so my cat might come up on the screen. So please don't be scared. So let me introduce myself first. So my name is Song Jae Park, and I am currently working as a kernel hypervisor engineer at Amazon Web Service. And I have interest in the memory management and the parallel programming and currently developing daemon. So in this talk, I will not explain how Daemon works internally. If you want that, you can refer to other resources in the project site or the source code. Rather than that, I, I want to explain how and what kernel hackers or their kernel subsystems can get from Daemon and its not yet mainlined future features. And I'd like to also explain uh, not about the things for user space because this is the kernel summit. And I will also discuss about future plans on extending daemon for more usages and improving daemon itself and enhancing memory management subsystems with daemon. So this is the overview of this talk. So, so first motivation. So we are showing that the demand for memory is increasing by showing the CPU to by showing the memory to CPU ratio on the AWS instance, but we don't see that the DRAM supply is following the track in physical machines. So we don't have enough supply. And that means that the memory management efficiency has been always important, but it's becoming even more important now. And Linux memory management subsystem works well, but it used only not so fine data access information from my perspective. And that's mainly because, the, because of the monitoring overhead. And therefore I have started developing Daemon. So the Daemon is a framework for general data access monitoring. It provides access frequency of each memory region and it allows users to practically trade the monitoring accuracy for less overhead. It pro so it's just a trade-off, just a practical trade-off, but it tries to provide best effort accuracy under the condition, and also it tries to minimize the overhead as much as it can under the given condition, which user has specified. And users can also set upper bound of the overhead regardless of the memory size of the system. So uh, in short, conceptually, it scans all the Monitoring, monitoring target memory for every five millisecond with less than 2% CPU utilization. I will show the evaluation in detail in later slide. So the source code is currently available in the development tree of course, and there are several not yet mainline features. And also we have backports of the development tree on upstream 510Y and 54Y stable series. And also we have merged those in Amazon Linux kernel or version of the 5.10 and 5.4. And also the essential part of the daemon works has been mainlined from 5.15 RC1. And also we have a user space tool and a test suite that available on the GPR V2. So let me introduce how you can use daemon via the programming interface rather than the user space interface. The first step is to setting the request, the monitoring request in the daemon context struct. In the, con in the object, you should explain how and what memory regions for which other space you want to be monitored by daemon. And also you should uh, register where monitoring event notifications should be delivered. In other words, some callbacks. So then the users can read the monitoring research or clean up things or doing some more funny works that they want to do with the monitoring research inside the callback functions. Then the second step is just starting daemon with the uh, request that we have specified in the daemon context object by calling daemon start function. Then a kernel thread for the monitoring will be created and it will serve. Then you can do your work in the notification callbacks. In the notification callbacks, you can reach out to monitoring research by uh, iterating through the daemon regions struct in the daemon context struct. 
After that, if you are done, then you can finish the monitoring by calling daemon start function. So let's do the light coding of a daemon based color module. So I want, we will write down a color module that doing the working size estimation, it will receive the PI of a process as a parameter and then characterize working size of the process using the daemon and monitoring research and then look it every 100 milliseconds. So from this point, let me share my screen. So I have prepared the boilerplate. So the boilerplate code is just simple. It's just a hello world color module. Uh, also the make file also has no secret. So first we will need to have a parameter to get the target ID. Have a variable uh, it as a parameter. And to use daemon, as I have explained before, we need the context object. And also, we will need to get the PID and the PID later. And for this, because we need to use the daemon context, we need to include daemon that they had a file. And also, then now we will create the context in init and clean up in exit functions. So, the first thing we need to do is taking allocating you. And we need to specify we want it to monitor the virtual address space of a process. Then we will find and get the PID or user specified PID. And we need to make a daemon target object will have the PID as its ID. Target in the context. Uh, that is uh, the notification callback. So this callback will be called for every obligation interval, which is 100 milliseconds by default. And then we can start payment and click on the error code. And so we should also write the callback, but before that, let's try to you know, first. If the context is there, we stop the daemon. 
not the context. This will also clean up all the objects that are registered in the context, including the target. And that's that because we have got the PID on our own. You should put that on our own. That's it. And now write down the callback, which we can do our real interactive work. The monitoring research is provided by the Drop Daemon region, as I have explained in the slide. But we should first iterate for all the targets in context because we can register multiple targets. So in this case, we are monitoring only one process, but we can monitor multiple process. And here we can iterate for all the regions in the target. And if the region is accessed at least once, then we increase the WSS variable with the region's size. And log the WSS. Quite simple, right? So here. Now, the uh, next thing to, so we have live coded the simple working set size estimation module within, I guess, I have done that in 10 minutes. So after it's very simple, and the, only the seven lines of code in essence for starting daemon was used. And now let's test the module. So for the testing, we will test that against an artificial access pattern generator program called MACIM. It will allocate 10 and 10 megabyte objects and then access all objects for first 10 seconds, but then for only first one for five seconds and second one for five seconds and so on. So we can expect that the process will have 100 megabyte RSS while the module will report only 10 megabyte working size after the first 10 seconds. So, On the artificial access pattern generator, build, and we will use this access configuration, which has the 10 objects. So, we expect the artificial. Uh, before, before that, I'd like to also show you a script that I will use to show monitor the RSS and the module replicate working site. It's just a simple while loop grabbing VM RSS from the status file of the process and grabbing the D message for the module's log. So, let's Start the feature access pattern in background. And just return module and pass the PID and So the 
RSS and the module reported work size. So as expected, the RSS is 100 over 100 megabyte, but WSS that uh, reported by the module is only about 10 megabyte. So, so finish the demo. And let me go back to presentation. Yep. Yeah, so we have tested the module and we have also confirmed that it works as we expected. Now, evaluation. So how lightweight the daemon is? Uh, for our testing environment, which runs on i3.metal AWS instance and with 25 realistic benchmark workloads from Parsec3 and Splash 2 we have ran the virtual address monitoring and the physical address monitoring using daemon and measured the uh, runtime and daemon's CPU usage. According to that, the daemon makes the workload uh, 0.62% and 1.53% slower for virtual space and physical space monitoring respectively. And it used about 1.76% and 0.96% of single CPU time respectively. So I would argue that the overhead is quite low and please note that the daemon is in this case conceptually scans all the memory every five milliseconds. And also, you, you just can still tweak each parameters for less overhead, though it will also means we will try some of the accuracy of the monitoring research. And how accurate daemon is? So there is, unfortunately, there is no good and easy way for strictly quantizing the accuracy of monitoring research, but we can just say that the visualized monitoring research look reasonable, as you can show here. And also the pattern for MA theme shows expected ones with high accuracy, as we have also shown before. And I'd like to note that uh, we can adjust the trade-off for high accuracy again. Okay? And though it also means that it can increase the overhead a little bit. And also I will show some more evidence on daemon accuracy in later slides. So next, let me introduce daemons. So we have we can now monitor the data access pattern of system with low overhead. What we will do, so what we what we kind of programmers want to, would want to do with that. Some imaginable cat imaginable use of daemon is the daemon-based memory management subsystem optimizations, of course. Such a procedure would in normally uh, it would normally like this. We will monitor the data access pattern of some memory range uh, via daemon and then find regions of our interest. For example, we want to we would want to find hot or cold memory regions from the monitoring research. And then we will want to apply some memory management actions such as reclamation or using THP or not using THP or promoting to DRAM and demoting to PMAM or such a things to the regions. And I, be, so Daemon is a feature of Daemon that and does the above works instead of you. So you just will only need to specify that, uh, specify to what specific access pattern of memory regions, what memory management actions such as reclamation or THP or such things they want to be applied. So this feature is currently merged in Amazon Linux, but not in mainline yet. I will post the patch set soon. So how to use demos using each programming interface? It's very similar to monitoring, but it requires only one more step. So you should put the monitoring request in the demo context uh, struct again, as probably explained, then create a new data struct called demos object, uh, which, is, which is standing for demo based operation schemes and then specify the schemes that you want to apply to the system in there. So the specification of each scheme consists with uh, three ranges for size, access frequency, and age of the interested region. In this context, the age means how long current access pattern has maintained. For example, if you find a daemon region that has number of access as zero and age is 30 seconds, then you can 
uh, say that the region, the memory region has not accessed for last three seconds. Um, and also you should specify what memory management action you want to be applied to the found regions. Then you put the daemon object in the context object and then call the daemon start. Then daemon will start monitoring as requested in the context and find the memory region of the specified pattern and then apply the action instead of you. All will be automated. So let me show you how you can really do this uh, with live coding again. So I will modify the previously written working size estimation module to reclaim memory regions of 4K or more size and not accessed for three or more seconds. So let me share my screen again. So I will do that in proclamation. Let's copy the module I have written before. So the change would be only creating a demos object and then putting it inside the context. So, I need a pointer and I need famous quarter object and other marks, which I I didn't explain about this. This will this will be explained in later. Before calling daemon start, so the first two arguments is the range of size. So we will find region memory regions having page uh, size or more larger than that. Range for the access frequency follow. So we want regions that didn't access that role. And we want to find regions that not accessed at least for three seconds. Uh, actually, this is, is the number of aggregation interval and the, date, the aggregation interval is 100 milliseconds by default. And the next argument is the memory management action we want to apply to the found regions. Memory location failure. So yeah, that was the writing of the module. So only two more lines of code has been written in Essential here, daemon new scheme and daemon set schemes. Let's test the product reclamation module now. So we will test that against the TLC access pattern with the, which we can artificially generate with MAC. Okay, so it will do the same, have the same behavior and by running the module and passing the PID of the MACM to the module, we can expect that uh, it, will, it, it will now shrink the process RSS to 10 megabytes after the 30, 13 seconds because it will find only regions that didn't access for 
at least three seconds and then reclaim those. So let's do that. First. So we'll close. Smart is the and and we can show that the RSS is going down and of course it can spike to 20 megabytes because in some point the regions that access before and regions access later are uh, within the same time window for the three seconds which need to be used before uh, finding the at least three seconds uh, not access so the demessaging is operation is not permitted. Uh, let's have the, in this case, because we don't have much uh, question in the working test side, because we have done shown that before, there could be no problem error, I guess. So yep, that was all. So let me stop sharing my screen and go back to. Yes, so I have live coded and tested and found that the module is working as expected. So it has effectively found the regions that not accessed for three or more seconds and then reclaimed those. So the RSS size of the process has been reduced. To evaluate the demos, I have made two example schemes. First one is the EKHP, which stands for enhanced KHP. It applies the M advice call with the MADB THP hint for memory regions that real access has been uh, observed. And it applies the M advice action for MADB no THP uh, hint for memory regions that having two or more megabyte size and not access at all for seven or more seconds. The, so this scheme is expected to reduce THP's internal fragmentation caused memory blotch, but still uh, preserve some of the performance improvement of THP. The second scheme is PRCL, which stands for product reclamation. It will reclaim memory regions that not accessed for 10 or more seconds. So it's expected to reduce memory footage with minimal performance drops. And the result was as shown here. The ETHP has reduced 76% of the THP's memory overhead. In this context, I am saying THP as the THP with always policy. Meanwhile, the ETHP has preserved 25% of the THP performance improvement. And the product reclamation scheme has saved 38.46% 38 of memory with only 8.26% runtime slowdown. I won't show if I can say only, but anyway, the gain was bigger than the traded thing, uh, if we show only the number. So we can say that demos works as expected and seems effective for some systems. So this can also answer to the question how accurate daemon is. Daemon is at least accurate for some of the system improvement like this. But I think we should ask a question again. Would that slowdown of 8.26% is really okay? So 8.26% slowdown of the product reclamation scheme that we have just seen seems too huge for the production, in my opinion. Of course, it might be reasonable depending on the specific requirement. And we can, again, mitigate this by tuning the scheme to be less aggressive. For example, we can 
uh, change the minimal age of the regions to be reclaimed from 10 seconds to 50 seconds or two minutes or in such a way. However, the Deimos scheme's tuning is also challenging because the tuning is needed for each workload and each system. And the parameters that we can use for tuning, namely the threshold of the, the range of size, uh, range of access frequency, and the range of uh, age, is not so intuitive for sysadmins. The, some kind of auto-tuning programs can be a solution and actually we, we have tried that and so we have made a simple auto-tuner for uh, daemon schemes and uh, then we have used that to auto-tune the project reclamation scheme and it has achieved 24.97% memory saving with only 0.91% runtime slowdown compared to the untuned project reclamation which saves uh, a little bit more memory uh, specifically 38% memory saving, but incurring 8% runtime slowdown, I believe this can be much better than that. Um, but couldn't we make the kernel to just work without such user space help? That was my question. So we have made daemon reclaim with some enhanced feature of daemon. So for such a productions, that production environments that prefer safety and stable needs more than performance gains, uh, we have made the demos to provide some additional features. The first one is time and space quarter per a given time interval. So demos, if, if the quarters are given, then demos use no more than the given time quarter of CPU time in the time interval in given time interval. And also if space quarter is given, then they must apply the uh, user requested action to memory regions no more than the user specified space quarter. And second feature is regions prioritization. Under the quarter is applied case, so they must will not apply to all of the regions that having the user has interest, the access pattern of user's interest. And in that case, which region should be applied? Which region should be applied with the user specified memory management action first? For answering that, we have made this feature. So under the quarter, they must apply the action to prioritize regions first. And the prioritization logic can be customized for different demos actions in the layer that uh, in under the core part of daemon and therefore it can be easily extended. So in case of the reclaim, we use the older and colder pages as the prioritized one. And we finally provide, we provide three watermarks called high watermark, mid watermark, and low watermark with user specified metric. This metric can be, for example, the free memory or CPU utilization or something like that. So we can deactivate. So in, in this feature deactivates the uh, operation scheme if the user specified metric is higher than high watermark or lower than low watermark. And we activate the, the scheme if the metric becomes lower than mid watermark but still higher than low watermark. This avoids demos using any resource on a peaceful or a catastrophic situation. For example, in case of the project reclamation, if there is sufficient amount of free memory, then there's no uh, need to start the project reclamation. However, uh, if it goes some down, then we should do some work, of course. However, if the situation is just catastrophic and therefore uh, daemon based project reclamation doesn't work well, in other words, if it doesn't restore the amount of free memory to more than uh, high watermark, then we just fork that and uh, let the classic or regular reclamation logic to work. So we have evaluated the demos safety guarantees by applying the project reclamation scheme to apply it to the entire physical space with different safety guarantees. So, for, so we found that the smaller time quarter reduced demos CPU usage and slowed down as shown here. And also uh, by enabling the prioritizing feature, 
we have found that it further reduced slowdown. So this means that we still need some tuning for each system, but the knobs we have provided we have introduced with these features would be intuitive for this admins. I mean, uh, we can at least limit the CPU usage of daemon daemons, and also we can uh, limit the amount of memory that can be reclaimed on the specific time interval by using the quarter, by using the space quarter feature. So using the safety guard features of daemons, we have made daemon reclaim. It, it is a daemon-based proactive reclamation column module that written using daemons. So it's setting the code for the module parameters for user specific uh, customization. Uh, it uses only 188 lines of code and it aims to be used on production, in real production. And for that, we have ensured the, the safety using the products and watermarks features and the chorus and watermarks can be tweaked via the module parameters, which uh, contains about half of the source code. So future plans. Uh, first of all, I'd like to note you that these are only in brainstorming level, so I don't have a real serious plan for doing uh, implementation of these, but I just wanted to share that uh, earlier and get some feedback. So first, we can extend daemon for some other use case. Uh, so we can expand daemon to be used for monitoring various address space because I have shown you only the virtual address space and also for some variety use case. For this, we need to implement new monitoring primitives for the use case. And because the primitives layer is separated from the daemon's uh, core logics, uh, we can do that without many conflicts or complexity. So currently, the monitoring primitive for so currently the latest version of the daemon in development tree provides the monitoring primitives for only virtual other space and the physical other space and page granularity system wide monitoring and. Only the virtual, only the one for virtual data space is currently being mainlined. So, more imaginable extensions would include more efficient page granularity, page granularity system monitoring, uh, because current page granularity monitoring primitives is only for proof of concept level, and I think the multi-gen errors page table based scanning might be able to be used for this, and also we can extend for specific C groups and for only specific file backed memories only, and also for read only or write only access. And second possible future plan is improving daemon. So the daemon's accuracy and overhead could be more optimized, you might think. Uh, for example, we can use adaptive monitoring attribute adjustment and region splitting. Uh, in other words, we can uh, find some regions that showing two stable access pattern or two unstable access patterns. In other words, uh, we, are, we want to find some regions that some wrong monitoring uh, interval and some regions that we are not really finding real access pattern in there. And then we can apply some more aggressive monitoring uh, attributes there to enhance the accuracy. And also, I am thinking about remapping regions based on monitoring research to sort it by honeys could be helpful for uh, enhancing the accuracy of daemon. And so the daemon assumes the each memory region will have some special locality. In other words, all the pages in each memory region are assumed to have similar access frequency, and this will be true for many cases but we can also assume some worst case which this assumption does not make sense. In that case, this sort of optimization might be helpful to still finding real regions. And for this, maybe we will need to um, maintain daemon internal address space and some translation facility for translating the address space address in the user's given other space to daemon internal other space. 
Finally, we can use we could use daemon to improve memory management subsystems. I think daemon can be used to help some of the existing memory, memory management subsystems. For example, we can use that to find KGP promotion and demotion target regions, and also we can find page migration better page migration target. Uh, in other words, we can find some cold memory regions and then and try to migrate the cold memory regions first for compaction or CMA case because the pages that not accessed frequently might mean that they would not be pinned in near future or for now. And also, I think we can use daemon to prioritize the LRU pages. In other words, making the pages in LRU list to be sorted in the real access frequency more proactively than current uh, schemes. And also, I think we can we might be able to use that for tiered memory management, for example, the DRAM versus PMM program. And the works could fundamentally be done in two ways. You might think we can implement a new subsystems wholly uh, using daemon, like we have, we, we, like I have done for the daemon-based project reclamation, or we can modify existing subsystems to use daemon. Uh, whatever way, uh, if you have some opinion on preference of these two approaches, I'd like to hear your voice. And I guess it should be dependent on each specific case, of course, and maybe uh, implementing new subsystems first and then get some user's feedback and then later modify existing subsystems would be also one possible option, you might think. So final summary. The daemon and daemos helps you write fine-grained data access pattern-oriented lightweight kernel modules in simple way. And such modules could be useful for enhancing memory efficiency of today's systems. And there are many more things to do yet. So I'm looking forward to your contributions. I need your help. And for more, info, if you need some more information, uh, please visit the project site or reach out to me via the email. Yep, that's almost done. And before finishing this talk, I'd like to say special thank you to all the people who helped me doing this. Without these people, this work couldn't be done. And I think I might miss someone's name. So please blame my bad memory and forgive me or ask me some beers after the pandemic is over. I will buy you some beers. Yep, that's it. And any questions? Thank you really much. Thank you very much. Um, I, I had uh, put uh, one question in the chat, uh, and then we can see if there are other questions people might have. Um, have you measured, since you said you want to use this in real life production workloads, have you had experience using it on, you know, real production workloads and other than just the CPU overhead, obviously by shrinking its working set um, or, you know, reclaiming its memory, hopefully not from its working set, um, that might have some impact on the workload's behavior. Uh, and have you had a chance to see, you know, what the trade-offs are, you know, if you can save so much memory, what does that actually do to the workload's runtime or uh, page fault frequency, et cetera? Um, I'm sort of curious what your uh, operational experience has been uh, when using daemon rec reclaim. So uh, in short, we didn't measure the workload impact on real production world, but we have used some realistic benchmark and real systems. So the so we, yeah, we have measured some impact, but uh, that was not for real production. Uh, we don't have the data yet because we didn't deploy it. Yet. We didn't deploy it on real. Uh, production yet, but uh, what I can say is that under uh, some realistic benchmarks, we have shown a minimal performance slowdown, and also we found that the slowdown can be controlled. So this means the runtime slowdown of the benchmark workload, and what we found is that the time quarter and time quarter and prioritization is effective effective for. Uh, controlling the amount of impact. Great. One Thanks. of the things that I'd also like to 
I doubt to uh, test question is that uh, we saw with some of the uh, Java based workloads at least is that um, uh, Java does its uh, garbage collection, uh, so it keeps banging on some areas of memory uh, which um, it doesn't tell the kernel about that it's a very low priority activity. So the kernel thinks all of that memory is important and it's accessing it all the time. Uh, but for the workload, that really doesn't matter. Um, so deprioritizing that in some way is uh, actually helpful. So uh, one question I have is more on the like, I, I still don't see why uh, the preference is doing this in as a kernel module rather than from the use space. Uh, like uh, the daemon can provide the, the information to the user space and in the use space I have more uh, access, like more flexibility to implement uh, the feature. For example, uh, as uh, uh, Ted said, like I, I can look at the refaults rather than just the, some watermarks and uh, implement more uh, sophisticated policies there. So uh, yeah. what's the what's the benefit of doing it as a kernel module? Good point. So I think there are two different perspectives here. Someone prefers to do things to make the kernel to just implement mechanisms and export those to user space and then policy is making on the user space. However, some people are still preferring doing as many as possible all the works inside the kernel space. And I believe that the two perspectives both make sense because in some situations, the user space control plane might make sense if they have some time resource and resource and time for making the great user space policies. However, in some situations, in some environments, I think some people would have no such enough time and resource for you just place investment and for such a case i think uh, putting at least some of the features inside the kernel which can not make optimal research but at least some reasonable amount of benefit would also make sense so what i want to do is uh, convincing both so i i believe that the optimal performance in optimal efficiency improvement could be done by only the user space control plane. I believe so. However, for some people that cannot spend their time and invest for the user space things, I think making the kernel to work at least a little bit better than before could also be helpful for some of the people. So uh, here, uh, to uh, again, coming to the, the kernel, uh, module, as you said here, uh, the sys admins still have to uh, like set up, uh, like configure, uh, uh, even for the kernel module. I I'm just wondering what's the like. Then we want some uh, something out of the box uh, configuration which might be helpful for everyone, right? Uh, that is the only way uh, we want uh, this like to be able like to be want uh, this part to be part of uh, the kernel. So what's the like? We still if we still providing knobs for the user space to uh, or sys admins to configure, we are still depending on the user space uh, like a, or human uh, to actually set those knobs to able to configure for their workloads, right? Yes, right, exactly. So the tuning overhead is still there, and we should need to still tune. However, by providing the knobs to be as much as intuitive for system administrators, I believe that they will be able to tune those with a uh, small amount of effort. And in this case, by using the time quarter and uh, space quarter, people can start by using uh, the such a the kernel modules like the statement based project reclamation to start with minimal quarter and after that they can start uh, finding some better uh, configurations so i think the default value should always be a minimal one and then they should find some better configuration on their own uh, I have a couple of questions and apologies if they are too uh, simple questions. I'm not a memory expert in any sense, but I was trying to understand when you're reclaiming pages, 
I'm assuming you're either reclaiming read-only or file back pages, or if you're doing write-only or, or rather pages that have been modified, you're kind of swapping it to disk. Is that what's going on? And you reclaim. So, mm -hmm. so there's no uh, difference in read-only page and dirty page. So we we only show the access frequency of the pages, and therefore uh, there's no difference in read-only and dirty pages for now. Right. For no, no, I understand for monitoring, but when you're doing reclaim, where you're saying you reclaim so much memory and you're saving memory, what are you reclaiming? Is it only read-only or dirty pages too? Um, read-only and dirty pages, both. Okay, so this does it mean if I want to use it, I need to have a swap uh, swap area? So if you don't have the swap device on your system, then it will work for only five back pages. Okay. Um, Good to know. And then the other one is uh, here you're saying time quota is 200 milliseconds per second. That seems like a lot. So what am I not understanding there correctly? Um, so can you repeat that again? In the, in the table that you have displayed, uh, the second row says 200 milliseconds per second. Is, is that the amount of quota you're giving for demos to run? That seems like a lot of, like 20%, right, effectively? So these time quotas are only set based on my intuition. And I wanted to explore how that works. And in this yeah. case, obviously, the 50 millisecond per second and prioritization enable would be the best option here. And yeah. so, yeah. OK. I'm and, just asking from the context of, I'm kind of curious to see, uh, maybe after it's uh, mainlined, how this could be used for like uh, mobile devices, where memory constraint is also there. Yeah, of course. And the default parameters for the daemon based proclamation in current version of the patch set is 10 milliseconds per second and prioritization enabled. So by applying this minimal quarter, I believe that using that on production would not impact the workload performance, but uh, it will still slowly reclaim some pages. And therefore, in the long term, I believe we will get some uh, feasible memory saving. And Ted has asked, this is also the time quote on a single CPU, right? So on a 32 core system using 20% of one core, isn't that much? Yes, that's right, exactly. Thank you. And also, if you want to, then you can also uh, let Damon to uh, do work for multiple contexts. And in that case, one thread for each context will be created. And therefore, if you cannot convince with the single CPU resource, then you can use multiple CPU either if you can spend. All right. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, we're right about at time. I want to give people um, five minutes just to stretch a little before we start the next talk. Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure if you have additional questions, uh, there was a contact address on the slide uh, where you can reach out to Songjae um, for more, uh, uh, more conversation and questions. Yeah, obviously. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.